Hey, this is LOA Today, the Law of Attraction Show. Welcome to LOA Today, Walt Thiessen and Joel Elston here. This Thursday, December 17, 2015, and tomorrow is a day that Star Wars fans have been waiting for for a long, long time because the Force awakens Luke. And we're very excited about it here because we're going to talk about the relationship between the Force, as portrayed by George Lucas in his films, and the Law of Attraction. It turns out there are actually some similarities, and, and there are some differences too, but the similarities are the parts we want, so that's what we're going to spend our time focusing on. Joel, how have you been? Things have been ex- outstanding, and life has been treating me excellent, Walt. I hope they have been for you as well. Absolutely. It's been a great time. Of course, we're in the holiday season, so things are getting exciting in that way as well. And uh, hey, things are always good every time of the year. It doesn't matter what time of the year it is. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> so, anyway, the Force. Has the Force been with you, Joel? It, it has been with me on a daily basis for a long time. It, it's been probably the last several years that I've actually identified it, but it has been with me for a long time. And the the idea of me identifying it and putting it to use has been really the, the, the part that I think you and I are talking about today, that the Force exists and how we... we use it and make it work in our lives it's so it, it's happening daily and i have uh, multiple th- multiple examples as we go forward today very cool you know when star wars first came out it was 1977 do you realize that's 38 years ago that is so hard to believe <laughs> it's unbelievable i mean it feels like it was yesterday for those of us who saw it when it came out in the theaters but uh, yeah star wars came out 38 years ago and the fascinating thing is that the concept of the law of attraction certainly existed, but the phrase the law of attraction did not exist. That didn't come until somewhere in the 90s. I don't remember exactly when it was. But uh, it makes me wonder, do you think George Lucas was writing about the law of attraction or was just that coincidental? Well, I, I, if I had the opportunity to ask him, I, I've often wondered that because it mimics so much of what we, we talk about and what we believe in. And there, even though the law of attraction named as such didn't exist, there certainly was a theory and concept in, in Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, several other uh, stuff, the, the Seth material, if you re- really want to get way out there. But there's some, there, there's some stuff that really mimics this, and the, law, the name law of attraction, as you said, came around in the 90s. But I, I've always been interested where he got his his belief or whether he just felt this is how things should be or could be. I've always wondered that. It's, it's hard to tell. I mean, I suspect that at least subconsciously there was an influence going on there because, I mean, the, the parallels are quite striking. I, I suppose the differences are, at least so far anyway, uh, with our practice of the law of attraction, we aren't able to, to leap 15 to 20 feet in the air <laughs> and have amazing reflexes that ha- happen at exactly the, the right precise time to block a, a lightsaber attack or something. But other than that, there's a lot of similarity. Well, what we could hope does develop eventually. <laughs> right now, <laughs> right, right now you're, you're, you're correct. But maybe even more powerful is the fact that our reality is dictated by our perspective and what we really believe. And the, the a, a lot takes place when, for example, when, when Luke goes to train with Yoda, and and there's he's trying to at one point raise the spaceship out of the out of the water, and he kept saying it's too big, and and Yoda's point was it doesn't matter, it, mm. it's what you believe that will make that happen, and that actually mimics stuff in the Bible, that mimics stuff from way back, where the the, the, the it's not the size of what you're trying to bring about, it's the the belief in can you really do this, and there's there so many times, if you, we could spend a whole hour just on the, the time that Yoda was with Luke in his training. That that alone was a, a period where there was so, Luke learned so much, and, and there was so much understanding that it is really about the, how we believe, how we bring about our thoughts, how we can channel our thoughts, and, and blocking out the negative, because there is the dark side that they refer to. You and I have been talking multiple times uh, over the last several weeks, we've said, almost every week we've said the law of attraction has no emotion. It has 
it, it doesn't say is it good or bad. Now he actually broke down broke it down into what he's viewing as good uh, or the dark side of being the evil, but it still was manifesting how, whatever you were trying to derive from that. And that was very very insightful for a film for so long ago and without any identifiable uh, direct connection to law of attraction it certainly wrapped it up very nicely it did it really did you mentioned the uh, the scene with uh, yoda and luke and trying to raise the spaceship out of the the lagoon there um one of the phrases and it's it's become one of the many iconic phrases that came out of that original movie is the the phrase that yoda utter, utters at one point when luke says I'm trying, but I can't do it. And Yoda says, do or do not. There is no try. Exactly. <laughs> by, by the way, I appreciate the accent. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the idea of where we, where we take in our minds, that, that is the, really the crux of why people feel the law of attraction doesn't work. They say, I'm trying. Trying means that there's an option for something to be other than what you're expecting. The law of attraction requires action and a belief to match exactly what you're trying to manifest. If you believe it and you have done it, the example we, we have multiply, again used multiple times has been breaking the four-minute mile, that once it was done, it was broken several times. Once you believe it can happen, it will happen. And that, that one statement that from, from Yoda was so direct and clear in a, in a very concise way of there, there really is no middle ground. The middle ground is basically saying I can't do it. That's true. That is exactly what it means, doesn't it? It means I haven't figured this out, so therefore I'm going to use that as my excuse. Exactly. And, and, and that the, the law of attraction can only respond to what you believe from the, the inner core of your being. If, if, it, if it worked on any other level, it, it would, everybody would win the lottery this week and every, you know, there would be no suffering. There would be, that it would be way too simple. It, it, it has to operate on what your belief really is. And when your behavior is matching your belief and your actions are matching your belief and all this stuff, then the law of attraction says, okay, well, this, you know, it, it, it's obviously this is it. It believes and, and, and it, it makes it happen. And the, the, the idea I often hear with clients that I work with, you know, that are trying to quit, for example, I have one young lady just comes to mind, and I actually used the Yoda line this week, she's been trying to quit smoking, and after all, she's quit, she's quit a lot of things, she's quit heroin, she's quit, uh, you know, painkillers, but she can't quit smoking. And she's like, well, I guess I just can't quit. I've tried as hard as I can. And my response was, really? <laughs> I mean, you, you have overcome the most addictive substance on the planet. You have, you've, you've turned your life around, and you really can't quit smoking cigarettes? Really? And, and, and once you sort of pointed that out to her, and she changed her belief system, this was, uh, my, my meeting with her was Tuesday, and, and, and just received a call yesterday. She, I'm, this doesn't mean anything for two days, but after leaving the office, she threw away her cigarettes and said, I've quit. And, well, that, and, that does mean something. It means at least she's committed to it. it, it committed to it, and, and she believes. And, and part of what I do in working with clients in addiction recovery, applying the law of attraction, is acting as if, not just acting as but believing that we're in recovery. But believing, one of the things that has always manifested when, when I try to work with people in the law of attraction, the 12-step programs actually have gone against that theory in a lot of ways, where you go to a meeting and you declare yourself as an I am an alcoholic even though I haven't drank for seven years I am an alcoholic well that in a sense is sort of a violation of the law of attraction I don't mind saying I'm a recovering alcoholic or I am I, I am no longer a practicing alcoholic but the idea of claiming that we remain in in I am not I'm a recovering compulsive gambler and I'll declare that if I'm at a gamblers anonymous meeting but in reality, I am no longer, I am a former compulsive gambler, that's part of my history, but it, it, it's what it becomes, and so much where, it, it, just where uh, Star Wars was taking off and where it was really leading us to believe, the idea of what we, you know, f fulfilling our destiny, and what once you, once you believe what your destiny is, then that is what it becomes. Luke, the movie starts out with Luke as, working for his uncle on some faraway planet doing just random stuff and 
by the end of the, in the movie, the hero. And it, it's because of his acceptance and belief of his destiny as he goes along. And you see his growth, and, and he goes from this fumbling little kid to a, a Jedi master in a short period of time. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just a fumbling kid. I mean, he, he's a complaining, whining kid. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and, and then all of a sudden, he, he, he again, within us, when all of us, it exists this ability to, to change our environment, change everything, and it really is simply based on our belief system. We can, we, our, our thoughts are that powerful. You know, however, you, oh, go ahead. However, most of us don't really believe that, and that's where the rub comes in. No, that's true. You, you mentioned something also about um, twelve-step support groups, and the thing that you mentioned is something I've always wondered about because long before I knew what the the uh, law of attraction was, that struck me as being self-defeating to say I am an alcoholic or I am married to an alcoholic if it's uh, Al-Anon or whatever, and. and it, it, it sounded like it was saying, I am stuck with this for life. I, I never really understood the logic behind that. And, and once the law of attraction theory came my way and I, I began to understand what that was all about, I even understood it less. <laughs> well, it, it, understand it, it, it less, you will. <laughs> exactly. And one, one thing that I, I always get heat from when I, uh, being an addictions counselor, is I am not anti-12 steps. I am... I do believe that often the 12 steps are misinterpreted and used in a negative way. I, I, I really think, in, in fact, probably the majority of meetings that takes place. When you have a success rate using the one-year benchmark of 4 to 6%, that is it's somewhere between there, of people making one year without using or drinking or gambling again, I really, in reality, don't find that a very successful form of treatment. 96% of the people that go aren't going to be successful. Yeah, that's so, kind of scary. And so I'm not, again, not bashing the 12 steps, but hoping that someday there will be an eye-opening. I think the number one reason is, is sort of the enforcement of, is, is the trudging up of the old stories, wallowing in the misery of what we've been in. When I share at a meeting, I share about the, the amazing things going on in my life, how my life has turned around. I Maybe in context will give a history of my gambling, but that's certainly not the point of my sharing. And it often will get mixed in with that. And I, 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 I will, I've been to meetings where it felt so negative, and I've, I've, early in my recovery especially, I wanted to gamble more than when I walked in the room because all I heard was, Gamble, 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 misery, mm. misery, misery. And that really became a, a problem. And then on top of that, you, I'm having to stand in front of a group of people and say, I am Joel, I am a compulsive gambler, and it just reinforced in me, oh, my goodness, I am that. It's like putting a weight on yourself voluntarily, saying, I am going to make myself feel worse. Right, right. And and where I bring, and I, why... I find what I do a much more successful model is I certainly will acknowledge my, my clients certainly have issues. They certainly are compulsive gamblers and they're, they're, they're alcoholics, but I have them declare their power in this recovery. They, 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 we search for where they have the power in their recovery. They are no longer a pre this, this young lady last week, she left my office. I told her, at this moment, you're a former smoker. You are no longer a smoker. And she is adhering to that and claiming, as of yesterday, that she's not having any desire to smoke, only because she is really owning it and really believing it. And I, I, again, the parallel between where we go with you know, the law of attraction, there are several scenes where when you really believe, I, I see a, uh, a you, we're certainly not a political show, but I, I, I'm, I'm watching, you know, I, I'm comparing, there's a scene where Luke and Someone, uh, I believe Obi Wan Kenobi, actually says to the guards, "You know, we're not who you're looking for." Or oh, yeah, the Jedi mind control, right? <laughs> yeah, using the Jedi mind control and tells the stormtroopers, and, and they like these aren't the ones we're looking for. Let's let's go over here, uh, and and he used that. Well, he really believed he was able to really convince them of that because he his belief system is goes that far. Well, in in reality, when you get a lot of our political pundits right now, or, or maybe people running for president, that really, really, when Donald Trump started running, I thought there was no chance he would even make the first month before people laughed him out. 
he is a, very much a practitioner of the law of attraction. <laughs> Again, I don't necessarily even say it's always for good, but he really <laughs> believes what he says. He, and he does, and yeah. He believes it so strongly. There's, even when he says outrageous things, people are like, well, he, he, he's, he's right. He's got to be right. Look how strongly he believes it. And, and it's um, amazing to see someone make the blunders and mistakes what traditionally would have knocked out any other candidate, and all it does is bump his numbers up because he is, he again, is a whether he's active in this or Donald Trump certainly practiced the law of attraction in his favor on a daily basis. Oh, yeah, that's true. And uh, I think it's fair to say that one of the reasons that his rather bumbling approach, I would describe it, um, has succeeded is because he's doing so in a political vacuum right now. I mean, the the uh, public perception of the roles that the president and that Congress and other political leaders have played in making our country worse off have reached you know new lows. There 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 is so little popularity for any of our political leaders that all it takes is for somebody to come along and bash almost anything, and you'll get a whole bunch of people saying, "Yeah, yeah, right on, all right." right. Well, and, and and so when when we when we look at 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 what's taking place in Star Wars, or we look look at what's taking place in our lives, you you, you see a very much a parallel of where we believe where where. You know when when Luke when Darth Vader told Luke he was his father basically uh, at the at the end of uh, what to number two I, I forget my order the, the Empire but, Strikes Back yeah. yeah exactly when when he when he told his father you know Luke instinctively normally would be like well that's a random statement you know <laughs> but <laughs> he automatically felt it within inside of him that that was correct he knew it resonated. that. In fact, he knew it, it resonated. It wouldn't have had any power if it wasn't true. And so it, it, it all came up, and then Luke felt betrayed on some level. Why didn't you guys tell me this? And, it, again, you see that in real life with us where, you know, where we really believe or our, our instincts, you know, our guts are telling us that this is right. When I first discovered a name for the law of attraction and understood how it worked, I instantly knew We've talked about this, and I forget in one of our previous interviews. I instantly knew Walt that my being identified that as being the missing piece in my life. Understanding that it mm-hmm. was, it was like once it was explained. Well, usually, you'll hear theories and go, "Okay, whatever," but I instantly knew, and, and 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 Luke instantly knew that what he was saying there. So the instinct was very much the same when 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 you're in tune with the reality or you're in tune with the universe you're able to pick up on truth that's why the law of attraction attracts so many people and a lot of people want to believe it and and you know except for well it can't work for me or i've tried it isn't that the ironic part i mean here we are we're describing all the different ways that people firmly believe stuff Good or bad doesn't make any difference. They still firmly believe it. Luke firmly believed that he couldn't raise that ship with his mind, and then he did it anyway. <laughs> right. Um, right. But but I mean, it's, it's like this long series of all these things that we believe in. All the people who are either believing or disbelieving, depending on which side of the fence they're on, in what Donald Trump is saying. Um, but when it comes to believing their own ability to focus their mind, they don't believe it. And and I say they because I'm one of them. <laughs> I've been in that place. I know you have, too, where we just have trouble believing. We can actually do that. Why is that? I mean, to give you another example, I'm, I'm a member of a Facebook group that focuses on what's known as copywriting. And for those who don't know, copywriting is where you write for sales. So it's basically somebody who, who's writing to try to sell something like, you know, an ad or something like that. And the head copywriter of this group made a really fascinating point, one that I don't agree with, but it was still a fascinating point. His claim is that we are able to control the minds of others, going back to Jedi mind control, right? But we're unable to control our own minds. And I thought to myself, you know, it's wrong, but boy, what a great description that is of the current mental state of people's own belief in themselves. That is so accurate. I, I, and I, I agree with you. You, you. His statement is wrong, but his his premise, in a lot of ways, is right. Of of how we believe. When I've often said, I found it fascinating that I could sit around, whether it's a meeting of professionals or I'm at a twelve step meeting or wherever I'm at, and I'm always amazed 
at everybody. And I've actually done experiments with this in group settings where I would just go around the table, say there's 10 people there, and I would, you're one of the people, I'm one of the people, Walt. And I'd say, Walt, tell Joel what he needs to do to get his life in order. And okay. you would be dead on in your description. Joel, you need to stop gambling, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. You would be perfect in your description of what I needed to do. However, I wasn't able to do what I needed to do, and I could then tell you what you needed to do and be perfect in it. <laughs> and even though 90% of the things were identical that we needed to do, we could identify it in the other people, but somehow that didn't apply to me. Yeah. Advice it's, is easy to give. It's just not so easy to apply to oneself. <laughs> well, and, 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 that, and, and that's where the law of attraction loses so many people. The, the idea that it, wor it isn't about will it work or is it just – it's at work. It's at work every moment of every day. And finding that way to use it to your advantage is the difficult piece. Understanding that it only operates on – a very deep level of what you're believing from the core of your being. That's how it operates. Your reality and what you really believe is how it responds, and it creates your it creates your world by that. And if you believe you're a victim and the world is beating you up and, and all this, it isn't trying to be mean to you. It is just simply saying, this is what you're putting out there, so I'm, I'm creating it. And that, that's where such a, the, the idea of mind control and all that, 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 that concepts of believing that we can, and other people we can influence them, but us, we can't change. And that's where so many people get lost. And, and if we ever have this awakening where people truly have that ability to, I was listening to this, uh, you'll love this, I was listening to this gentleman the other day, he's very much a believer in the law of attraction, and he goes way out there on some stuff that I, I don't necessarily agree with. <laughs> he has a belief that in 50 years, humans will be able to have a, the ability to move things with their mind. Well, he we believes, know that, that that's already true, so that's not surprising. It's just that right. the number of people who can do it are very intim infinitesimally small compared to the overall population. But, yeah, I right. can see that. That would be sense. And he said that that would be relatively a norm. And, or, sure. or that the idea that we could... Uh, you know, read each other's minds, and well, it, you know, I I use the example is not as as complex as what is how most people think of reading someone's mind. But my sister and I, we obviously have spent a lifetime together. I have the ability to sit in a room with my sister, and nobody could tell, but my my facial expression has changed, but she can, <laughs> and I can look, look at her a certain way, and she instantly knows what I'm thinking. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and all I do is maybe raise an eyebrow slightly or just stare. <laughs> and, it's and she, eerie. <laughs> it, but, well, and that is not communicating in the way that most people think reading people's minds, but is a nonverbal form of communication. Oh, yeah. And that will continue to develop. And I, I believe that when, especially when you get like-minded people together, you will be able to eventually, the, we're, we're growing in this ability where as we as this evolution of the mind takes place and our understanding of the law of attraction and more and more people implement it, then this growth can take place. But it is fascinating that with all of this that we're talking about, you or I today can, can something can happen to go, my goodness, how can this, and we, are we just totally lose it in negative thought in about six seconds. And that's the fascinating part is we know it, we believe it, but it still is a battle every day to practice. Well, what we're talking about here is, well, to, to put it in Yoda terms, the evolution of belief in oneself it is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and that, that is, is, if we can ever keep that, that going, I work with a, a lot of foster care kids, and I, I'm, I'm amazed at the foster care kids that label themselves I was with an 11-year-old boy the other day and took him to lunch, and I asked him, I, I, I'm just trying to develop a th therapeutic bond, so I, I don't talk, even talk about anything his first session. I just wanted to go to five guys and get him a burger. Sure. So he, he kept asking, he was baffled why I wasn't asking him any questions. And I'm like, let's just go eat. We'll talk about all that later. I just want to talk about it now. And he's like, well, 
do you want to know about my childhood? And, said, <laughs> and he goes, He's well, read all the right books, right? <laughs> right, right. And, and he, we've obviously been therapy, you know, been through many therapy sessions, and, and so he kept on and on. <laughs> and he goes, well, here's the things that are wrong with me. And I stopped him and I go, really? I said, when, you're 11, where, who told you these things? Mm. And and so I actually ended up canceling an appointment to spend another hour with him and not planning on going there, but, but starting to re- deprogram what he believes in himself. I said, you're 11, buddy. I said, a lot of bad stuff has happened to you, but it's not your fault. And the, these labels, and I started calling therapists, and I started... You know, I, I started creating a rut because all this kid, all this stuff, this this negative self belief, and he says, "Well, I'm antisocial." And I, I said, "You're not. <laughs> You're not. You're mm-hmm. 11. You've been through a lot. Your response has certainly not been appropriate." But are you, no, you're not what you're believing here. And and that 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 was so that actually made me very sad that even at 11, he's programmed to believe all this. Now, I'm, you know, reprogramming this kid. It's going to be a, a, a massive job over time. And interestingly enough, the therapeutic community doesn't even really view that what that is being a big problem. They're no, not, they, they, they consider that to be a solution because now he's a client for life. Right. And, and you know, and he's <laughs> like, well, I'm on, on like nine different medications. Oh, and, God. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, oh, my gosh. I said, you're, you're 11. His, this is a, a, general, a young man, not giving too much away, but... He was horribly abused in his mother's home, by, and, and his father, they don't know who his father is, and he, he, he was literally left, kicked out of the house and, and at 11 because the boyfriend of the mother didn't like him and was wandering around looking, you, you just didn't know where to go. And he was, he was found barefoot in cold weather, just, just wandering. Barefoot? Out really? Yes. Oh, my goodness. And, and he, he, I, 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 there are times when I, I never get violent, but there are times I want to get violent. And right now, I want to grab that boyfriend and shove him against the wall. How yeah, dare you? Yeah. I mean, if you're going to go to the terrible extreme, the unjustifiable extreme of putting somebody out the door, at least give him a pair of shoes for Christ's uh, sake. Well, and, and, and then, I, and, but the, the, the interesting thing is how that then turned around. Since he, you know, when stuff like that happens, he, he it happened, I think, when he was nine. So. He learns how to cope and deal with that. They put him in a group home where there's a bunch of inappropriate behavior going on. So he, he, he sees all these older kids acting out in this real negative way. So he's basically just learning all this stuff, and then all of a sudden the psychologists start labeling him, you know, antisocial, you know, all these, all these crazy diagnoses. And I'm going, buddy, you've done nothing wrong here. I said, the system has screwed you up. First of all, that, that ass uh, <laughs> threw you out. And hopefully he pays one day but beyond that the system has equally abused you oh yeah and 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 but within that his core belief system even at 11 was believing all that and this, this is that's what's so disheartening and when you hear how we get so screwed up in in all this so him believing what i'm telling him is it, it it's like foreign language to him he, he's like well i'm telling him that that in reality he certainly doesn't need to behave the way he's been behaving. I certainly am not condoning that. But to have all these labels, I, I said, you're, you're actually behaving to your labels. You're living, they've given you a label, and you're performing like a circus monkey to that label. And, and the, I, the, I'm going to make a prediction here. I, I could be completely wrong. I certainly have no therapeutic background, so I don't have that to go on. This is just a gut reaction. This is just a gut feeling. But I'm going to predict that because he's so young, and therefore there hasn't been as many years to canalize uh, the, the false belief systems, the wrong belief systems into his nervous system, I'm going to predict that he's going to make a quick turnaround. By quick, I don't mean like tomorrow. I mean, instead of taking many, many years, I think he's going to, to take maybe weeks or months, and I'm not sure exactly how long. But I think that the more that you talk to him, He's going to start canalizing a new method of thinking, a new method of internalizing beliefs, and it's going to turn around faster than it often would for, say, an older adult. An older adult has to overcome a lot more junk that they've been programmed with. He hasn't been programmed as long as an older adult. So, I mean, I could be wrong, but 
I'm going to predict that he's going to turn around relatively quickly. I, I agree with you, especially if I'm able to have access, because, again, the therapeutic community doesn't necessarily like what I'm doing here. They're, they're, they're more of, of getting on board with the concept of he's a really screwed-up kid. Well, clearly they don't and, like him either. <laughs> they don't like him, and he, the, the whole system, and in reality you have this little, you know, and he, he's a very bright kid, very, so much, mm. and he has a wonderful energy when you get that facade off of him. And, and you, you get this wonderful energy from this kid, and, and he's really resilient. And I kept telling him that. I said, look what you've overcome. Look how strong you are. I mean, and this kid was not smiling when we met. He, he, by the time we were leaving, he was smiling. Oh, was, wow. You know, and, and, and so there's a side of him that if we can put forth enough to counteract the negative, and I'm actually doing some behind-the-scenes work right now trying to get him into a foster care home and, and with, with some real – I know I have some very positive foster parents that I know that don't have a kid right now, so I'm trying to get him in that house, and that will make a world of difference as well. But but these are the things that when you know, imagine if there was no intervention in this kid, like you're saying, he gets 20, then he's 30, then he's 40. There's changing that belief system. We ask how hard it is to change, why it is so hard for us to accept. When you spend an entire lifetime. Believe in one thing, it's so hard to go in another direction. And, and yet, I would even say that when you have your entire lifetime and it makes it so hard to go in the other direction, that depends on how much you're willing to believe in yourself. Because right. if you're willing to believe in yourself, it ain't all that hard after all. Well, it, it, yeah, I do believe it. And this may be hard to explain without my normal chart that I draw, but I do think you get to a point that you go so far that it actually becomes easier, if that makes any sense. I've, yeah, that, that's kind of like the bottoming out. Uh, yeah, exactly. For me, when I hit the bottom of my addiction, believe it or not, it, it really became an e a much easier path than than before when I was still fighting all the other stuff. So, now, others will say that's because of the contrast. Do you think that's what it is? Is it the yes. contrast that makes it easier? Yes, I do believe that. And okay. It, it, and so the so within the, the you know keeping with our theme of the Star Wars where you, you see throughout all the films that we've had the privilege to watch that there's a lot about destiny being fulfilled. There's a lot about belief systems. There's a lot about, you know, you create what your beliefs are creating these realities and, and how, how you believe in yourself, how you're going to be able to perform. And that is such a, 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 a way that, b believe it or not, so many religions were offended by the Force and Star Wars. When yeah, came, that was an interesting thing. I remember that. There were, there yeah. were a lot of, of churches that would literally preach against being a Star Wars fanatic. Yes. Yes. And it, it pretty much like some of the, the, the fight we've had with the Law of Attraction with certain religions where they're, they're saying, this is against our religion. And the reality is nothing further from the truth. The law of gravity is not against a religion. The law of attraction is not against a religion. It is a way to live your life. I know atheists that live, uh, that, that use the law of attraction in their life in a very solid way. And I know hardcore fundamentalist right wing, wing Christians that use that in their life, but in a, in a good way. So it, it, it really isn't about religion. The force is not about a religion. It's about understanding that the power exists in our mind, in our thoughts. There's a, uh, one of the things I was reading on Facebook the other day, they, they, they mentioned if you understood how powerful your thoughts were, you would never have another, another negative thought the rest of your life. And really believing that takes a lot of work, but I believe that it, these negative thoughts have been so conditioned that even people that practice it at the highest level unfortunately have some gravity to the negativity that can quickly come and come back. And now, it, I think there's an actual reason we can pinpoint for why that's true. I think the reason is that we don't get instant gratification on LOA. When, yeah. when we put out a thought, it doesn't instantly come back. There's a delay factor. And I, I'm not totally sure I know why that delay factor exists. I've heard a number of different theories. I think perhaps the most compelling theory is that uh, because positive thoughts are so much more powerful than negative thoughts and, be, and because we're kind of swimming around in a, a soup of these thoughts, both positive, positive and negative, that we've been dwelling on to various degrees for a long, long time, 
um, it, th there's a lot of soup to work through. So yeah. you can put out the most positive thought in the world, and it, it's just going to take a while to get through that soup. But uh, that, that's about the closest I can come to a, a good explanation. But whatever the reason is, there is a delay factor, and we're not used to dealing with that. We, especially in this life where, um, in this, this perceptive real universe, as we call it, uh, we're, we're used to having to deal with challenges and problems and difficulties and horrible things and blah, 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 blah. And as a result of that, we always, uh, almost from the beginning, we always learn as individuals, as very young people, to just try to control the thing that's right in front of us and get an instant reaction on that. And we become addicted, in a sense, to the instant reaction. So as a result, when we try to apply a, a concept like LOA, which doesn't have an instant reaction, that's where the belief starts to fall apart really quickly. Well, it, it does. And when, when you know, I, the, the law of attraction, it, there, again, many, many theories on, on why the delay. The law of attraction can only respond in, how, in, in, a, in a way that you believe. It, 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 it isn't. It's going to operate within the boundaries of the universe. It's going to, you know, it's not going to violate gravity or the laws of physics to make it happen. So the idea that, that I am going to automatically have money in my bank account immediately uh, is, is not a likely scenario. If I want to be successful, I, I'm going to have a chain of events. I'm going to have a pipeline for that to develop and, and, and come along. And the, it has to operate in what we believe. It, it's the, the the law of attraction doesn't take time into account as much as it takes into what we believe can happen. And, and that becomes such a, an important factor. If you go buy a lottery ticket, we've talked about this so much, that you don't really believe. You don't, you, you don't really believe you're going to go violate the law of the statistics that much and be one of 278 million people and win. You, on some level, you can't, your logic doesn't, allow that to happen and it's not that it's impossible to no. believe that totally and completely it just it's a reflection of how far we as individuals have to go to get our belief up to that level right instead of having instead of, instead of behaving kind of like this machine this mental machine that constantly spews out all kinds of thoughts in all directions all at the same time and expects only the good ones to work out right exactly <laughs> it, 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 it is it is an amazing thought when when you know we, we're in a middle when the, when they're in the middle of these thoughts and the, the law of attraction is picking up so many like you're saying the soup of I love that term the soup of what we're thinking our thoughts are changing constantly throughout the day and what what, what we're focusing on changes throughout the day so the law of attraction is like oh my goodness you know <laughs> what where, where are we at and and so in reality because our thoughts aren't necessarily focused always on the same topics or always on the, the same thing, there is, a, there is a whole lot going on. And so when you really get to, when, you know, when I pray every evening for the stuff that I'm praying about, I, I really try to feel what I'm wanting. The, and, and it isn't any, any longer, it isn't about I'm praying for money, I'm praying for financial security of course but I'm that, but that's part of the the well-being I'm praying for a sense of well-being and and allowing being specific at the same time allowing enough room for stuff to take place and not just being stuck on one topic or one idea the, of, of being the only way for something to work I but I had read last week a, a thing about dr. Seuss and I found this sort of amazing. Dr. Seuss, the, the, I forget the gentleman's name, but uh, the, the, the author of Dr. Seuss, was he was rejected 27 times from various publishers for his books. That's a lot of rejection. That, that is. And, and I, I found that, uh, you know, after a while you're like, okay, nobody wants my book, especially right. a book like that because you're like, wow. Pop on pop? I mean, really? <laughs> yeah, maybe I am being a little silly. But... One day he was in New York City, and walking down the street, he runs into a friend that he hadn't seen for years. This friend had just started working for a publishing company. They start talking. Obviously what happens is this guy decides he'll publish the book, and really a great choice on that guy's part, Dr. Seuss's book gets published. In interviews, Dr. Seuss has talked about how 
he he was walking in this on the street at the exact moment in New York City in that crowd of people to run into his friend who happened to be walking on the same side of the street at that exact moment. And there's more to it. Like, he, he was supposed to cross the street to get to his hotel. There's a lot more to it when he tells the story. But he happened to be there. And, again, what, what are the odds of being right there? And, and a cynic will claim, well, that's just a coincidence. Well, well, if, what the you, cynic doesn't realize is that there's no such thing as just a coincidence. And, and what, had, what has happened is he, he manifested that meeting, that happening, by not getting stuck on just one thing, if if you okay, I've had twenty seven rejections. I've gone I've gone the traditional route. Screw it. I'm I'm you know, I'm going to be. I'm, if he would have stopped at twenty and said, okay, I'm going to give you a job as a cashier somewhere, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, but no, he he knew his book was going to get published. He knew in deep in his heart it was going to work. He just never relented from that. And then once he believed enough that. You know, and the universe picked up. This guy's not going to quit until the stupid book's published. So we're going to make it happen. It's just a, that's almost that's almost the respect of that it it looked you know it looked like to him is I'm not giving up. Right. And, and once it put out there that this was going to happen, there was nothing that was going to stop it from happening. And I, I don't know how many books he sold, but that certainly was a a, a, a lucrative meeting for both sides. Oh yeah. Yeah, he, he certainly published a lot of books, too. You know, you mentioned something else earlier, and it brought the Star Wars theme back into my mind, because I could hear Sir Alec Guinness saying, the Force will be with you always, Luke. But he also said something else. He said, trust your feelings. And that's exactly what you were talking about. You were talking about how he, you can feel deep down that you know something resonates with you. you. You can feel deep down that it's going to work or that it's not going to work. And that's the feeling that actually drives the train. So if you if you feel deep down that you're really not going to win the the lottery because you know the odds are against you, you're right. You're right because you felt that at the lowest level, or not the lowest, at the deepest level. Well, th that's a clue. It's a clue to us that says your feelings are the way to control your thoughts quickly. That was probably the the best thing that the secret taught us, and it's one of the things that Star Wars teaches us. You trust your feelings. Your feelings are not going to to guide you the wrong way. I think it's a really valuable piece of information. It really sort of becomes the crux of what we're talking about. It, the, the belief where, we, where our feelings take us and where we allow them, when we really buy into them and we really own them, they, you know, trusting your feelings. Tr forget the other stuff. When Luke fired the shot that went into the reactor, you know, the, the, you know, the odds of making that shot are very slim. But he fired it using his belief. He he, right. he thought and he, he turned off the computer. He turned he off turned, the targeting computer. That's really yeah. fascinating. Yeah, he turned off the targeting computer. He 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 then you know he really believed and, and it meant everything. The entire mission, all the all of that depended on that one shot. Mm -hmm. And it all falls apart if that one shot doesn't go in. And that piece to me stood. It, it was such a great example of. Again, trust your feelings, take a deep breath. The minutia of the world will try to distract you away from where you need to be. That's how we get so scattered. And he had plenty of distraction. I yeah. mean, he had a, a, a couple of uh, raiders on his tail. He was, he, uh, one of them had been driven off. Well, actually, it was Darth Vader had been driven off by uh, Harrison Ford, Han Solo. But nevertheless, he was still being followed, and he still had to get that thing hit, and he had to get out of there, and all had to happen in perfect timing. So there was plenty of distraction going on. Plus, he's flying in the middle of this trench along this uh, Death Star, uh, you know, with stuff flying past him within feet of his of his X-wing, and trying to maintain his his direction and trying to maintain all of that while focusing on when to push the button. <laughs> there was exactly. plenty of distraction going on. And, and, and that, that's sort of our life. Uh, if you look at that, that 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 could be an analogy for our life. You know, you got bills to pay, you have this going on, you have that going on. And, and the idea of being able to keep your thoughts in a positive direction is it, such an amazing gift when you're able to do it. And that's what the Law of Attraction is teaching us to do. Trust your thoughts. Take your thoughts. And that, that's where the power exists. The, the tangible exists within our thoughts. And that's, that's the piece that is so hard for people to grasp because people think the outside forces are what is at play. And the reality is it's our inside forces that are at play. 
And, and, and no surprise that that's what we think. We think that it is the outside forces because there are so many of them. We're constantly faced by them every single day, every single night, all of our lives. We're, we, they're always there, and they're, they're hitting us, and it, especially from a very young age where we don't really understand the law of attraction. We, our, our connection to where we came from is kind of you know, drifting away, and, and we're kind of losing touch with it, and we feel very vulnerable. You know, we need somebody else to feed us. We need somebody to provide the warmth and to provide the house and all that other kind of stuff. You know, we're, we're completely vulnerable to outside forces. So no wonder we're so attuned to outside forces. And that's what makes it such a challenge, remembering, reminding ourselves consciously that despite the fact that all of our experience is about being impacted by outside forces, that's not where our attention has to be. Our attention has to be inside because that's how you keep the outside forces from overwhelming you. Well, and, and when, when Luke went to the planet uh, to, to work with Yoda, and the, it was just him and Yoda on the planet, right. and y Yoda's concern was when Luke sensed that his friends were in danger and needed to leave, Yoda's concern was you're leaving too early because of the outside distractions, just what you're talking about. You're not solid enough in your belief system, in Yoda's opinion, that the outside influences could certainly take you down. And that's that's almost a parallel to what you're saying. The the Until you get to a place where you really understand it isn't the tail that's wagging the dog, it is the 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 reality, your, your thoughts are the reality, not the other way around. That, that's the hard part to get, because it seems so opposite. We, we, we are so reactive in our behavior. You know, you get, a, you, you, you get home and your kids have messed up at school, you're trying to call the school, you got an electric bill that you forgot to pay. You, you, you see all of that as the reality, and that's where your energy and focus goes. And then, then when you take a deep breath, it goes, that's the distractions. That's not the reality. That's and, right. And that, that becomes such an important piece of all this, of, of really accepting it and allowing it to work. It's just such a, a contrast to what everybody else has been brought up with, like this young man that I'm working with. He, you know, in, in, a, in 11 years on this planet, he has certainly not had a very good introduction to what's taking place. No. And, and, and he's... He, he's He's very confused, and he's buying into what all these people are telling him. And it, it's, and and then he meets this crazy man last week that is is telling him, "No, they're wrong, not you." <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and but I also can tell you that he did resonate with that. He did, he he picked up. He, he's a very bright kid. He instinctively knew what I was telling him was correct. And that's what makes it really cool. That that's I think part of why I believe he's going to have a, a faster turnaround than even he expects. Oh yes, I, I, I believe that, and I'm gonna, um, you know, and, and of course, you know, the, again, my backstory that, you know, I become an advocate for children, so uh, I, I will be obsessed in making sure he gets the help he needs and uh, uh, be, being placed in the environment that he will be able to uh, to thrive in. Which is very cool. You know, you mentioned something else earlier that occurred to me once again while you were talking there about uh, your experience with him, uh, which is that even the masters, the Yodas of the world are dealing with the negativity and, and we all slip up the, even the, the most masterful the dalai lama will slip up and allow the negativity in and star wars actually portrays that in a couple of cases for instance early on in the movie when we first meet yoda um yoda and obi-wan kenobi are debating the idea of whether to train luke and obi-wan kenobi wants him to take him on as a student and yoda says he is too old <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So with all these reasons why no 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 you can't this kid's not a good candidate for for jedi training once yeah. again here we have a yoda yoda as a jedi master somebody who is supposedly an expert at using and and adapting to and and internalizing the force who's forgetting all of his own teachings <laughs> well and, and that becomes such a to me that's why it's so well written and when you when you and i challenge our audience to to maybe watch the movie's before the new one comes out, and, and watch it with a, maybe with a different filter, filtering for the law of attraction stuff. The, the, I think it's, there's so much more in there than we realize. It, it's, a different, it's, it's different when you watch it that way. And I, I, I think that in the beginning, you're right. I think he, you know, he's taken the time to... There isn't anyone who 
doesn't have doubts or, or, or trouble implementing this in their lives. I, one, of the, one of the practicers, one of the great practitioners of the law of attraction, and people don't really realize this, but Mother Teresa was a very big believer in the law of attraction. She didn't use the words, but her, her actions and her, her, some of her writings suggest very much, what, very much that. And some of her writings, she has a lot of self-doubt about everything. And, and, you know, a lot of people, and even her belief, she, for Mother Teresa, has writings where she even questions the existence of God. And that's Mother Teresa, right. Lord, you know, and that's, that's, that's pretty big. And, uh, but to me, that actually reinforces how, how, what an amazing lady she was, because it, 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 it stresses the reality of it all. It's the, we're human. And we, we have been given access to this really powerful, very powerful tool, probably the most powerful tool of, in the universe, and we yet, we're not giving the instruction manual to it. That's the piece that's interesting. We mm. have access to it, but we don't even how, know how to turn the on switch on, or we don't even know how to turn the off switch on, which is more important sometimes when you're using it wrong. And yet, the, the one thing that I can take from that positive as a positive, is the fact that the Yodas of the world get it wrong. Yes. And yet they still manage to become Yodas. That's the, that's the point. And, and so I, I, so it, what it means is, there, there have been times in my life when I thought to myself, my goodness, when am I ever going to be able to stop all these negative thoughts that are coming to me? I mean, I know that's the job, right? I know I have to start focusing on the positives and blocking out the negatives and just keep my mind where I want it to be and not where I, want, where I don't want it to be. And then I go through the day, and throughout the entire day, negative, 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 negative. It's like, oh, my God, how do I get onto the positives again? And well, then realizing, well, the masters have the same problem on a daily basis. They don't necessarily get to the point where they're able to eliminate those negatives entirely. They just eliminate enough of them that they start to succeed. And now it starts to seem possible. Now it's like, oh, well, I might not be able to eliminate the negatives throughout the day, but I could eliminate them for five minutes, maybe but, 10, but maybe that, 20. Exactly. And, and, and that's how you break it down. The, the immediacy of it is right within, you know, there, there's a... The most pow- the only moment in time that has any power is right now. Yesterday happened. Tomorrow's not promised. Our power exists in right now. And when we can break things down into right now, and you can control your thoughts right now, that's when it starts to matter. The the idea that you know most of the negative thinking comes from getting ahead of ourselves of anticipating problems or not expecting but right now when you can take those I, I use that technique quite a bit when when something happens and, and, I, and then I'm anticipating all the hassle that's going to cause me or wh- what's going to be involved I often sit back and go, look right now things are incredibly good I have dealt and overcome far worse things than anything on my plate right now I have no doubt I'm going to overcome that again I use that to focus me back to where I'm at right now and living right now in that moment and knowing that if, if right now is the only time I have any power and that I can control those thoughts right now, and, and you narrow it down to a small piece of time, if that makes any sense. I don't know if I'm translating that very well in my thoughts, but that, that you know, the, the relevant moment in our lives, we're in control. I can control this minute a lot better than I can control this day. And we can always take uh, a leaf out of Luke's book because Luke is the one who says, the force is strong in my family. My father yeah. has it. I have it. My sister has it. And from what we've heard of the previews, there's going to be another member of the family that has it. Well, we're all a member of the family. We all have it. Yes. And that's really cool because we can become Jedi masters of our own lives. Well, it, it certainly, once we realize that and once we can implement that, you then become the master of your own life. And, and, and that is such a, a, an amazing thing that can take place. And that really sort of is the point of life. You've been given access to this incredible power, and we all have an equal amount of access to it. Learning to tune in on it is really the gift that, that changes everything for, for people. And it, it, it's life-altering in a way that, that people that get it, when you hear Oprah Winfrey or, or some of the, the, the 
she's a very big pr- practitioner. Uh, Jim Carrey, I heard him talk the other day. Very big practitioner of the law of attraction. Mm-hmm. And, and you 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 hear where they were, hear where they are now, and it's not not necessarily just about financial stuff as it is about where they're at mentally, how comfortable they are now, and how how much they really thrive and enjoy life. But yet, there's still struggles. Which is the fascinating thing. I mean. If there's one constant theme, particularly in the first three Star Wars movies, is that Luke is constantly learning to believe in his own connection to the Force, and he's constantly stretching himself on that, and and that's that basically describes his whole evolution throughout the Empire Strikes Back and and into the third movie as well. I mean, they they're all about the growth of Luke, the growth of his acceptance of the Force, and of his willingness to apply it with the belief that it will actually work. And it does, which is very cool. Well, and, and, uh, I haven't seen, I have no inside knowledge of the movie, and I haven't seen it yet. I know it comes out tomorrow. Uh, there are some showings this evening, I believe, on some pre, pre-screenings. pre But I, I'm very interested because a side of me is wondering, does Luke fulfill his destiny and actually become his dad? And uh, you know, I've, I've wondered that. I don't know what's going to happen in the next three. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it's... Uh, uh, there's been a couple scenes to make me wonder. I wonder if Luke is going to really become his dad. Uh, so it, it's good. I'm, I'm excited about the concept and excited about where they're taking it. I'm also excited, in, or more interested in we we've, we've changed directors now, and is the same theme going to be as strong since we have a different director for this movie? Well, I think we do know one thing. Uh, news reports say that George Lucas has seen an advanced screening of the film, and he loved it. That's so it, at least in that sense, there's a continuity. He's bought totally into the idea that this is the, the right, appropriate next film in, in the, uh, the nine-part series. So there's at least that. And I, from what I've seen, I mean, there, there isn't a whole lot. They don't give you a whole lot of spoilers in the trailers. But from what I've seen, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a continuation of the, the, the same kind of thing. The only question in my mind, the thing that they kind of lost in the middle three movies was the characters, the, the, the wonderful relationships between the characters. That, that, it, was more, it was more martial than it was interpersonal. And, and that's where I think they started to lose audiences. I have a feeling, and here it is again, that feeling, I have a feeling we're going to start to see the relationships again. And I think this is going to be a very cool movie as a result. That that is certainly something that I, I'm, I'm hoping for because I'm very excited and I, I'm glad we're able to have it for a topic because not only is it something that I've watched the movies and thought of, but it, it is an interesting way to view the law of attraction and maybe when people do go see the movie or, or, or watch some of the, the, the previous movies, they, they can look at it with an eye toward the law of attraction and just everything we talk about every week is, is pretty much what they're espousing on film. Well, unfortunately, we've used up our hour, but we've been doing it in a very fun way. And, uh, Joel, uh, I don't know about you. I'm going to be seeing the movie probably right after Christmas. And uh, may the force be with you. You as well, Walt. Thank you very much. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. 